Hello everyone, this is uh, Kalyan Karmakar here and thank you for joining me uh, in what in Mumbai is a nice and sunny uh, Sunday evening and um, this is a part of my Foodocracy India series where I talk to you about uh, places from across the country where you get some really good food and it's part of uh, a series which I've created which like I said I call Foodocracy India. It's a play on the word democracy and the idea here is to talk about uh, some of our favorite restaurants, eateries, street food places, family run joints, cafes, modern places uh, from uh, across the country and uh, the idea is to um, sort of give them a bit of a boost and leg up and uh, share positive stories from the world of food, uh, places which we like, places where we've enjoyed uh, the food, some of the places where we've had to stay away from off late because of the lockdown but India's getting back to normal and, and it's working its way and of course we have to be patient till it does and, and if we need to stay home we will stay home but, but we wish them all well. A lot of these places have come back now uh, already in terms of delivery uh, options and so on. Some of them can't, some of them are street food joints and, and, and uh, places but the important thing is to give them our support and that's the idea. So use this hashtag. Uh, hashtag foodocracy india and and use your social media whether it's instagram uh, facebook twitter tiktok youtube whichever format you're comfortable with whether it's uh, writing the videos uh, photographs and, and just share the love about food this is not so much about uh, the best place to eat and so and so place or the best dishes to eat here or anything like that it's not about lists uh, it's it's not about the ultimate meal or, or anything like that. It's, it's just about stories of good food, uh, happy food moments. And, uh, and I say that this is a story of uh, the sort of places where India eats and therefore it's foodocracy for India. I started this initially uh, on my blog, finallychopped.net uh, and then I moved it to uh, Instagram uh, and I, I sort of do audio video podcasts uh, around that. And I'm doing this through Instagram live uh, currently. And then I try to save them on IGTV and uh, Facebook and, and YouTube uh, also and if possible on my podcast anchor you know wherever it works I do everything by myself I have no agency no production company whatever so you might have my cat jumping out if he feels hungry on my phone sliding off but if, if everything goes well and if I'm able to save uh, stuff then I'll post it uh, later as well uh, if, if you're not able to watch it now or watch it uh, fully uh, the only other thing uh, sort of rule is that uh, since I, I sort of treat this as a podcast, while many of you are uh, joining in and sort of waving your hands and saying hi and hopefully will participate in the conversation, I will not break the flow uh, and, and take in questions or answer at this point, but I'll try to do that at the end of um, this podcast. And there's a reason for that. It's not that I'm being uh, rude, but it's just that uh, when people watch this later or hear this later, they might get a bit uh, confused. But I'll definitely, especially if you make uh, comments which are uh, pertinent to the issue, try to address them at the end. Because when I put this later, these comments uh, won't show. Well, enough uh, of introduction and all of that. Yeah. This is my Nimbu Pani, which I always have uh, at, at the end of uh, a nap, uh, which is a good Sunday nap. And, and today I am going to take you to uh, Nashik. And, and that's really the last trip which I made uh, before the lockdown started. And um, it was not my first trip to Nashik. Nashik's uh, in Maharashtra. It's, uh, it's about, um, you know, a four to eight hour journey from uh, Mumbai, depending on the traffic conditions. They tell me it's three hours, four hours, but it took me eight hours both ways in my latest uh, trip because we set off in the evening. So uh, time is rather fluid in India. And uh, well, I'd, I'd been there earlier. I'd been there. Uh, maybe seven, eight years back when I used to be in market research and Mind the Automotive was a client of mine so I'd gone there twice to make presentations but we'd not really spend too much time eating around and this time I got an opportunity, I was invited by the TEDx uh, Serene Meadows team to give a TEDx talk over there on how food can bring people together and I just, I mean, I mean there were a lot of huge uh, achievers and people who've done really big uh, stuff who were there talking at uh, the TEDx and here I was talking about my breakfast and, and how I share stories of food and how we connect and all of that. Um, not as serious as the sort of work which you're doing, but it was a happy occasion. And after that, the lockdown happened, so they have not been able to collate these videos, but that's fair enough. But uh, in that two-day trip, or less than two-day trip, I managed to get a bit of uh, the sense of the food 
thanks to the TEDx, uh, Sireen Meadows team, people like Maithali, Nidhi, and then Vivek Raj. So these are all people uh, part of the organizing uh, team. And Vivek Raj in particular is a, is a food lover, grown up in Nashik, studied in um, Mumbai, gone back to Nashik, where he uh, and his family uh, run a private uh, local FM channel and also a private bank, uh, cooperative bank out of Nasik. He's a food lover, so he'd been given the role of taking me around uh, or, or taking me to good places to eat, and he did a stellar job. In fact, that's the way, best way to see a city or, or even experience an eatery is through the eyes and ears and possibly with the company of someone who loves it. And, and that's what really matters. It's not about what any food writer writes, blogger writes, what a book is there or what list is there or what uh, you know, these, uh, these rating sites say. If there's someone who says that they will guide you or take you to a place which they love and, and uh, allow you to have or, or treat you to or tell you what to eat over there, just go with them and, and go with the flow. Uh, whether it's life defining or not, I, I can't guarantee. But I, what I can guarantee is you will definitely have a good and happy time. And that's what we really need. Uh, a, a place which will leave us with a lot of happy memories and experience. And, and that's uh, what all these stories on Food Ogress India uh, is, is all about. So um, normally I, I focus on the eatery when I do the, uh, this sort of podcast series. But since uh, not too many people might know about Nashik over here, I, I do, myself don't know much. But I'm going to share whatever little uh, I know uh, with you. So um, yeah. So, so Nashik, like I said, is a, a city in uh, Maharashtra, and and it's in a valley. You cross some hilly areas. It it was, uh, it is called the Temple Town, and and I, I believe there's some important temples uh, over there, Hindu temples. It's also then uh, called nowadays wine country in Maharashtra because most of the wine uh, vineyards are over there, uh, Sula and and many more, more. A lot of small private players as well, and and they're very proud of that. So it's it's a heady combination of religion. And, and wine. Uh, the Roman god Bacchus or Bacchus would be uh, happy if someone can tell me how to uh, pronounce that. And, um, but when I went there, I saw that there was uh, some fabulous food uh, over there as well. Nashik is famous most for his misal um, or misal. Uh, and I've spoken about misal earlier when I was talking about Pune's uh, Sri Krishna misal in one of my last broadcasts. And, and also when I spoke about Prakash in uh, Mumbai. Well, uh, the people in Nashik claim that uh, their city is the Misal capital of uh, Maharashtra. People in Kolhapur would uh, contend that. People in Pune would contend that. Uh, people in Mumbai are too busy sort of earning money to bother too much about that. But we get some pretty missile, good Misal over there. And, and uh, you know, you can go and eat Misal at any place at Nashik. And then there will be 10 people who will say that you should have gone somewhere else. And that's the sort of passion which the place uh, evokes. Vivek Raj took me to a place called uh, Tushar Misal. And, and Misal in Nasik is more a morning place. So um, the folks at Tushar were kind enough to keep it open uh, for us till 4 o'clock. And, and Vivek Raj has grown up having Misal over there. And it was very interesting. It was spicy. Uh, but, but also there was a certain creaminess which, which uh, came to the Misal curry, the cut which they add, uh, or the sample which they add separately. It's not creamy, you know, but, but you know, Chef Sifas joined in um, and, and, you know, chefs would have a better term to it. But it was not a, you know, sometimes a missile can be like a clear um, a soup again, but, you know, a clear gravy, whatever. But this had a slight texture to it, which I believe came from the use of uh, coconut. And, and they use uh, mung beans and they put shave over there, not farsan. And I was told that in um, Nasik, it's always um, a fixture to give dahi with the missile. So it, it made for a nice meal. And, uh, and to hear the story of uh, Tushar Misal. But this podcast is not about that. I, uh, um, you know, Vivek Raj also took me that evening before we went back for a gala at the TEDx Serene uh, um, meet at a place called uh, Nayantara, which is uh, at old, old Nashik in the market. So we actually took an Uber there because it's, it's difficult to park. And, and you get Sabudana Varas over there and, and is a family favorite. It's, uh, I'm told, in Nashik. It's in a big traditional shopping area and you go to Nayantara and you place your orders so there's uh, Sabudana Vara and, and it's a lot flatter than what you get in Mumbai and and, uh, and and as much as the Sabudana Vara I believe the coconut chutney which they give with it is equally priced so you place your order get coupons get it on a plate and, and, and eat it over there and along with the chutney that was really nice and uh, then at night 
I, I sort of slipped out from the gala soiree wine and all of that after I did the social and formal part of it. And, uh, and I asked Vivek Raj, where can I go for dinner? So Vivek Raj, poor thing, uh, as, as he was stuck being part of the organizing committee, he, uh, he told me where to go. So he said that, you know, apart from Misal and, and Sabudana Vara, uh, another big thing in the Nashik uh, food scene, and which is reasonably recent, like maybe a couple of decades old phenoma, uh, phenomena, is the mutton uh, or goat meat places which have come up. And specifically, uh, a sort of uh, cuisine which is called Khandesh, Khandeshi cuisine, which comes from the area uh, around uh, Nashik, the hilly areas. But, but there have been a lot of restaurants which have come up uh, in Nashik uh, in the last few years uh, and which are very popular for this. One of the most popular places um, is, is called, um, uh, uh, it, it, it was a name, I'm, I'm just referring to my blog to see the name. A lot of people uh, recommended that I go there. I, I had only one dinner option, so I couldn't go there, but um, I, so I had to choose. So this place is called Diftya Budlia, if, I, if I've got the pronunciation right. I think I haven't, but almost everyone who knows Nashik said that maybe I should have tried it out. And if I go back, and I'm sure I will, I will try it out. But um, what Vivek Raj told me is that there's a place called Renuka Khanawal. And, and he said that it's, a, it's, it's a, in a place called Canada Corner. Uh, hi, Justin Trudeau, if you're, if you're watching. <laughs> so it's a place called Canada Corner, College Road in Nashik. In fact, that's where uh, Vivek Raj has grown up and, and uh, Tushar Misal is pretty close over there as well. So he said that he showed me the place when we went out in the evening and there's a small alley and an oldish house. And he said down that alley uh, or Uthon, like we say in Bengali, uh, Chokat is uh, where this Khanawal uh, is. He said it's a few years old but, and he said that, look, it's, it's not really life defining food, but uh, it's food prepared by people from that home. And it's really nice food. It's, it's the sort of food which uh, we can relate to. It sounded interesting to me. And, and uh, while I'd heard of Khanawal before, uh, especially when I was writing, uh, working on the book Sindhu Durg uh, in Mumbai, uh, because uh, Sindhu Durg is a Malwani restaurant and it's one of the first air-conditioned Malwani restaurants. And I was told while doing that book that before that, most of the Malwani places were Khanawals. So, and I, and I never um, experienced a Khanawal, though I'd heard about it then. So I thought I'll go and uh, experience it. So I, I took a Uber from uh, this uh, club where we were staying and, and zipped down to uh, 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 Renuka Khanawal. Now for guys who don't know what a Khanawal is, and I hope I'm pronouncing it right, uh, though my surname is Karmakar, I'm actually Bengali, so it's actually Karmokar, Kollan Karmokar, as Ushautap was reminding me recently in a chat with Tara Deshpande. Uh, so, uh, so I might get some of the Maharashtrian uh, pronunciations wrong, but I'll, I'll tell you, uh, what it is. So Khanawal basically is a very traditional eatery or, or inn sort of thing. So it's, it's a sort of makeshift small uh, place where, uh, you know, one or two items are cooked and normally, uh, you know, it's family run or one or two people who are uh, doing it. And, and there are a few temporary tables which are placed over there and, and people go and eat simple local food and, and then uh, move on. And in fact, uh, in Mumbai before the Irani cafes came up in the mid 1800s. Mid 1800s, those were the only eateries which were there in Mumbai, the Khanawals, and and it's really the eatery, uh, Irani cafes which brought in the sit-down uh, dining uh, phenomena. The the uh, clientele in the Khanawal is uh, largely still male, though there were people like Maithili uh, or or uh, in the TEDx uh, committee who are from Nashik who said that they go to Renuka as well uh, with their families and on the first floor there's a family eating section but uh, otherwise a lot of these Khanawals and, and see traditionally they were meant for itinerant travelers you know because traditionally in places like Maharashtra and, uh, and so on people didn't really eat outside of home I'm talking of 1700s and 1800s because eating outside of home was not the done thing to do among say the Hindu community or even the Muslim community and all that from what I understand so only people who are traveling on work and who are not carrying their food they were the ones who would need to eat and the Khanawals uh, serviced them. One of the existing Khanawals in uh, Mumbai is Panchampuri Wala in, in CST, which is of course now a little eatery, but it's very, very fancy compared to the way it had started when it was just a shack with Mr. Pancham in the 1800s selling five puris a plate. But I digress. 
so it's it's more a male uh, place and 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 an interesting fact which i learned in uh, renuka from this gentleman who was a bit worried when i was taking photographs and he introduced himself as a policeman i, I don't know he seemed a bit uh, high in you know, high spirited yeah, but he said that um, a lot of the men who come to these khanawals uh, come here to eat non vegetarian food when it's not allowed uh, at home and i've been told this about uh, the military restaurants in uh, bangalore as well that people who would not allowed to eat non veg food in, in at home would come to the military restaurants in bangalore or the khanawals uh, over here to eat and no such problems in bengal and calcutta and the pais hotels you eat non veg at home and here but maharashtra bangalore there are households where there are restrictions or certain days periods where you're supposed to not have non veg so people would come to these khanawals and eat non veg and that's when this gentleman got a bit wary when i was taking uh, you know pictures overall and he said that don't put these up because you know there there people eating here who might not have told uh, folks back home that they eating non veg and their daughters or kids might see it on instagram and say papa you are eating non veg so yeah you you should keep these things uh, in mind anyway so um i i you know around 9 9:30 pm i walked into uh, renuka khanawal and um, you know is there's a small gate and it's like this old fashioned house uh, sort of things which i've grown up uh, around in calcutta in the 70s and 80s uh, in the slightly suburban areas so i i, I removed the gate and i and i walked in uh, opened the gate and the moment i walked in like my eyes uh, lit up and and i broke into a big smile so there was there was this nice uh, small passage and and there were a few plastic tables and three four chairs uh, four chairs per table and and i saw people sitting and eating there and like i said largely uh, men in fact there were only men not alcohol place though it's it's just uh, men eating there and um, some uh, college folks some middle aged folks some people who looked like they worked in offices some who looked like businessmen blue collars but they're all eating happy focusing on the food some look seem like they'd come together uh, to eat uh, some seem like they were uh, solitary diners but sharing a table like i was uh, this is before the social distancing era and when i looked down the passage uh, you know at the end from where the house starts and you know it's no fancy villa or anything like that like you see in these italian uh, travel and living shows it's just very basic but but very clean uh, like like almost any maharashtrian restaurant i've been to is so when you look down then there were a couple of these uh, elderly thais or eyes uh, you know uh, very very elderly ladies a uh, maharashtrian ladies wearing sarees almost bent over and one was slicing uh, salad which is kushimbir uh, uh, so onion cucumber and then mixing it with a bit of dahi and the other lady was patting out bhakris which are uh, maharashtrian rotis and instead of using the rolling pin they used their palms to flatten it out and uh, and and they were doing it and and then this one lady came and and she was sort of putting the food or bhakris on some of the tables and then i saw this gentleman walk in uh, from there who seemed like the owner and and he was going from table to table and and taking the order and i could hear people referring to him as bapu and and you know that's the thing about these uh, foodocracy india places which i'm speaking about that no matter how big or small they are street food or or established places but these are always places where uh, the owner is like front of staff so so the owner really creates a relationship with customers and 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 stands for what the restaurant stands for uh, represents what this restaurant stands for and that is where the trust comes and and that's going to become so crucial so critical in the post covid uh, period the trust and and i think that all these sort of uh, individual led uh, restaurants are going to have an advantage over there so um he came to my table and and took my uh, order and and when i asked him he introduced himself in, as mr anil gethi and he said that the place is about 4 years old and and he told me that everything is cooked in house we were speaking in hindi uh my broken hindi and his broken hindi because he's he's maharashtrian uh so but but we communicated pretty well and uh, and he said that um, everything is cooked in in house and the mutton is sourced uh, locally so um the menu was simple it was largely uh, non veg dominated there was mutton there were egg thalis and there were chicken and and uh, you could go for individual dishes and rotis bhakris or the thali so i i decided since i didn't know if i'd go, come back to a place like this or the, this one again i went for the big daddy of it all which is about 450 bucks or something which was the mutton special thali so um so he took our my order and um, you know came back in a little while 
and uh, put put the plate in front of me and uh, then uh, uh, I, I sort of gave him my phone and I said can you take a picture of me so uh, this very um, he's not very old I'll, I'll show you his picture but but he took the picture phone at me looked at me and said must a smile maro which means give a big smile and the thing is, I was, I was damn tired because, you know, we had that eight-hour drive the previous day. I don't believe them if they say it takes you four hours to reach Nashik, at least not in the evening. Yeah. We woke up the next day and we were doing rehearsal after rehearsal after rehearsal. My God, these TEDx guys really plan out stuff. And someone like me, who's like a, you know, freestyle speaker, those rehearsals were, uh, you know, <laughs> whatever. But we're done with. And, and, then, and then in the evening, without resting, we went to eat. Came back and I had to smile for the for the soiree and these things. I was I was like damn tired uh, over there. But when he said like must the smile maro, let me show you. Uh, I'm I'm just flipping the camera to show you my blog finally chalk, and that is the must the smile uh, I had uh, managed to produce thanks to uh, Anil Getty. and and this is a menu card uh, the thali as you can see there's uh, mutton, uh, uh, chicken and and that's about it. Um, I'm going to show you uh, the place also before I, I sort of explain my thali to you. So uh, this is the place, like I told you, you walk in and there's a veranda. And that's Anil Geti, uh, Bapu. Like I said, it's not that he's very old or something like that, unless he's dyed his hair. But, but he had this like nice positive demeanor to him. And, and most of the uh, sort of uh, people there seem to be regular and, and knew him. And, and this person-to-person -person interaction becomes so much more important at a time like this and uh, okay now now there's a food it's it's a lot of food okay but but what i decided was that i'll try to waste as little as possible and i did eat 75 percent of this and i'm very proud of it and and the thing is that khandeshi food is supposed to be spicy spicy as in chili hot and i have a low tolerance level for uh, chilies but i i think i performed pretty credibly at the end of it and uh, and the fact that i didn't have to run to the loo uh, talks about the good quality of uh, meat use as well as spices. But let me tell you, uh, show you what all came with the mutton thali. So this was a zinga chutney, which was a dried shim chutney. And, and Bapu said that you have this with this, which is the bajra bhakri, crisp bhajra, bhajra, bhajra bhakri millet. Really nice. There was also atta chapatis with it um, and, and very soft chapatis, all done by the moshis inside. Uh, this is the green chili thecha. Uh, this was actually served on the table, but I put it on the thali to uh, make it look nice. Uh, this onion, you know, Nashik is onion country, like India's onions are produced over there. And look at that bright, fresh, sunny, cheerful uh, onions over there. This is the keema, uh, which came in it. Uh, this is the rasa. So most Maharashtrian thalis come with a rasa, which is a curry base. And, and that's all normally made with uh, with a... Uh, gravy of uh, fish bones or meat bones regardless of what is made so it's a sort of a stock served on the side um, this is a mutton fry so that's a lot of food and and this is the koshambi remember i was telling you uh, which is like a raita so it had tomato uh, coriander uh, cucumber onion and a slightly sweetened dahi so this is what i had as dessert it is a bit cooling and and this is indrayani rice and and they make a special mention of it in uh, on the menu card. So Indrayani rice is a locally grown rice in Maharashtra and, and I tried it. It was uh, soft, short grained, slightly sticky, but uh, went very well with the spicy uh, curry. So like you can see, it was uh, quite, quite a bombastic thali, but it was uh, after all uh, the special mutton thali at, um, at, at uh, Renuka Khanawal. And, and remember, I'd already eaten the misal at Tushar and, and the Sabu Danavara at uh, Nayantara and also mango milk, uh, pineapple ice cream at another famous place over there. So I was quite full and I was tired. But, but when I saw that and when, when Anil Geti Bapu told me to give a musta smile and I saw the thali and saw how glorious it was, I said, you know, this Bengali is going to make, I'm, I'm going to make Bengal proud and I'm going to go for it, even if it looked like a lot of food. And even if it looked very red and very taunting, and I can't uh, handle uh, chilies too much. Well, like I told you, I mean, uh, there were no adverse effects when I went back. Uh, I didn't have to spend the night in the loo, no acidity, no loose motions, nothing. So the chilies, masalas used were very, very good quality. 
a lot of it ground in house and the mutton my god it is such such excellent quality goat meat i i mean also credit to the cooks because they were obviously a result of uh, slow cooking but at the same time it is it is good quality uh, mutton you know and and each each uh, mutton dish was different so the mutton fry had had a slight chewiness to it and and uh, it was really about the meaty flavors coming out there was a certain unctuous creaminess to the keema or mince meat which i think came from the fact that it was roughly chopped and not finely minced and had bits of fat in it uh, which you won't normally get in the city and uh, and 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 that went very well with the bajra roti and the ch- soft chapatis and and uh, as my friend digant was saying tultule mangsho soft tender mangsho uh, as 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 we say in uh, bengali and so what i did was i had the uh, the soft keema with the soft uh, roti the chapati the crisp bhakri i had with the uh, with the uh, mutton fry and i also had it with the zinga chutney as bapu uh, recommended the dried shim chutney and and it was a great combination and and the bengali in me said i should have mangsho bhat so i took the mutton curry and had that with the soft indrayani rice and and that also like diganto is saying over here so tultule so tender so 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 lovely and and uh, and like i said the spices were hot it it made me perspire and and i can't handle that much chili yet um i i finished a lot large part of it and and i would have the uh, koshambi raita in between uh, to sort of cool me down and um, while it was hot it was not the sort of um, chili heat which which burnt your throat or hit your heart it was good honest food and and i think that that was the last meal i had outside of mumbai apart from the paratha place we stopped on the way back from nashik to the city uh before the lockdown happened and it was such a memorable meal i, I think all of them which i which i had in nashik were memorable but the one at renuka khanawal was particularly memorable memorable and which is why i thought i wanted to tell you about it because i mean the entire experience i mean i was there alone uh, of course guided by vivek raj and and who told me to go there but you know i i went there alone but everything about uh, you know the people who are eating there the vibe of it the the eyes or the eyes the, uh, the elderly maharashtrian ladies uh, making the salads and the and the koshimbis and the bhakris uh, and the chapatis in one corner and and the smell of cooking inside and and the cl- overall cleanliness and and you know bapu coming from table to table and taking orders and chatting with his customers and and even the guy who sort of i think was a bit high and came and told me he was a policeman and not to take pictures because uh, they would be caught by their uh, kids as having non veg outside and i didn't put uh, those pictures later but and and then and the food it was such glorious food i mean we talk about local we talk about regional and we talk about uh, a lot of modern restaurants and a lot of modern chefs who are making regional food trendy again amongst us and i think they're doing a great job because uh, if it wasn't for them a lot of us would be having only uh, green curry and pizzas and i had uh, a fantastic pizza this afternoon from caitlins but the thing is that if you look around us whether it's the big cities like mumbai delhi uh, bengaluru kolkata and of course the the tier 2 ones like uh, nashik guwahati and everywhere or or even all the smaller places there's lots and lots of regional food uh, around us in these restaurants and and really good stuff and 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 i'm in my like in the later half of my mid 40s and or okay the beginning of my later half of the mid 40s and i'm trying to discover uh, all of this catching up on lost time and i'm going to urge you like please please do that um, go to the big restaurants go to the big chefs see what they're doing but but open your eyes open your eyes to what's around you it's it's a lot of, a lot of fabulous food and when you do and you discover them then talk about them and please hashtag uh, use the hashtag foodocracy india tag find it out if you want if you don't want there's no problem but just use foodocracy india so that we can always share this love so that's me That's all I had to say about uh, Renuka Khanawal uh, of Nashik in this episode of uh, Foodocracy India. But uh, let me now uh, scroll down and 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 see some of the comments which have been coming from the start uh, because I'm doing this as a Instagram live and and for people seeing this later you might not be able to see the uh, comments. But if anyone has any experience of uh, Sonia Roy Simpson saying how have you been? I've been pretty good. So uh, Shashwati saying hello. So uh, Uh, Maharaja baby loaf Suman's asking he's sleeping after waking us many times at night that little brat Dennis the menace of a cat 
So uh, listen, if, if any of you have any comments about uh, Renuka Khanawal, Nashik food or, or local small eateries, please type them and I'll try to read them out. My friend Digonta is joining after a while and said hello and, and he was also made the Tultule mutton reference. I'm quickly scrolling down because I don't want it to become too long. Uh, Shashwati wants to have the thali right now, Digonta saying cook it. <laughs> but but Shashwati is also saying that this place reminds her of Kanase's Dhaba at Satara where she had the autumn's uh, awesome uh, mutton thali. Supriya Bose, if you've got anything from your travels, do tell us. And, and Sandeep Rao is saying definitely going to explore the way you are urging us to explore. Now listen, I, I mean, uh, for me, this is new stuff. I'm a city slicker, I must confess. And it's, I have not explored that much. But, but you guys, uh, many of you here probably have explored much more than me. So, so please write about that. Please share about that. And if you haven't, start it when you can. And here's one more thing which I want to say. If, if say, you feel that you don't get to travel that much and you, you've got a busy life and you live in a big city, like uh, with our cat baby loaf now, I don't know how much we're going to be able to travel in the near future because he's, he's got so attached to us. I'm going to show him to you uh, that I don't know how much we're going to be able to travel. But there's a lot of good local food uh, around us. There you are, baby loaf. What's your favorite local food joint? Uh, oh, you're saying it comes out of a whiskers and royal canine bag, you little naughty this thing. Ha, huh, you want to sleep now after waking us up. <laughs> so, so that's baby loaf. And um, it was lovely talking to all of you. Uh, thank you so much for joining in this Foodocracy uh, India episode uh, where I was talking... Uh, where I'm talking about like eateries uh, across India, where uh, we've had some really amazing, happy meals. And, and I'm trying to focus on local food or local eateries. And, and in this episode today, I spoke to you about Renuka Khanawal in Nashik in Maharashtra. And uh, if you have more such suggestions, please uh, write in over here. Otherwise, I'm going to end this broadcast soon. And also do keep an eye open for my other series, Foodocracy for Her, where I speak about women entrepreneurs in the food and uh, beverage industry in India. Uh, I've, in, in the first episode, I spoke to Sheetal Kakkar. Sorry, not Sheetal Kakkar. Uh, Sheetal Kakkar is a Gujarati home chef friend of mine. Uh, but this is Pinky Chandan Dixit in the first episode. And, and she runs uh, Som Restaurant in Mumbai. In, in the second uh, episode, I spoke to Manzilat, uh, Manzilat Fatima, who runs Manzilats in Kolkata. In the third one, I spoke to Gayatri Ayer, uh, which was a couple of days back. Uh, she is a third generation uh, owner of the Madrasi Hotel uh, in Jamshedpur. It was set up by her grandfather, but after that, her grandmother and her mother really drove the business and now she is. So I hope that you are uh, following that series as well, Foodocracy for her. And this is Foodocracy India. And uh, Pickle to Pilaf is saying, love the trivia. I mean, these trivias are what really liven our meals, isn't it? Like a nice chat or, or adda. So you'll find them on my IGTV on The Finally Chop. On my Facebook page, uh, uh, finally shot by Kalyan Karmakar. And if I'm lucky and if the video got saved, then you'll also probably see it on my YouTube channel, uh, Finally Chopped TV and uh, Radio Finally Chopped, which is uh, my podcast uh, series. So thank you. Uh, goodbye. Thank you for joining. This is Kalyan Karmakar uh, signing from what is now not so sunny, uh, but uh, a pleasant and dusky evening in uh, in in. Um, in Bandra and someone saying that I should speak to Doma Wang from Kolkata. I know Doma well, uh, very well and, and I do speak, plan to speak to her. I'm, I'm going to speak to about one person uh, a week and, and you know get a spread of people from across uh, the country and, and get their stories. And, and Doma's story with Blue Poppy and now Blue Thap, Poppy Thakali is really wonderful. And, and uh, Harry, Harish Murjani, so lovely to see you. Uh, Harish Murjani uh, was uh, my wife's boss and uh, at FCB Ulka, the creative director whom she looks up to very much, well, her first boss. And FCB Ulka is where uh, I had met Kainaz and, and then he got married. So, so great to see you, Harry. And, and thank you everyone for joining. Uh, I'm going to post this later on IGTV, Facebook and everywhere. And I hope you enjoyed this episode of uh, Foodocracy India. Thank you and bye.